10 Entrusted Facts You May Not Know About Your Navy. Hey guys, my name is Sandy Sills. I'm a licensed realtor here in the Central Florida area. I specialize in Airbnb properties. We manage and host them as well, and we also own Airbnb properties. So we're very uh, familiar with the Airbnb space. Today I want to do a video on 10 interested facts you may not know about successfully operating an Airbnb property, right? The first thing I want to say is I'm in Central Florida, I'm in the Orlando area. Orlando itself, Disney World is in Lake Buena Vista, the Kissimmee area. It's about 20, 20 minutes away from the Orlando International Airport. Orlando itself does allow short-term rental, but you have to live in the property to do Airbnb through them unless you, you buy a condo hotel there in Orlando. So most people are buying in Kissimmee, Lake Buena Vista, Davenport, Claremont, which is closer to Disney World. SeaWorld and Universal are in Orlando, but it's you can't rent an entire unit here, so people tend to travel from the Kissimmee area back to Universal once they're staying in the area. And once you're staying in the area, everything is about 15 to 20 minutes away, you know, give and take traffic. So that's kind of what's important. So the first number one, 10 interesting things I'm gonna do. The number one is, you could self-manage. You could self-manage your Airbnb. You don't necessarily have to get a uh, property management company. The second thing is automation. Automation is what's gonna allow you to self-manage the property. So what does automation look like? It looks like having a smart lock, so you could have um, contactless checking. Having a smart thermostat and having it programmed so if any exterior door is open, it will shut itself off after five minutes. Having noiseware. Noiseware is a software that's installed in the home which will regulate the level of noise. So if it's a lot of noise, it will alert you on and up on your phone and then you know that there's a party going on. You could also operate your pool from an app on your phone. So you could figure out, you know, how long you want the pool to run for. Typically, you want it to run five to six hours per day. You could regulate if the pool eat is on, how long you want it to run for. You want to do eight to nine hours a day if you're doing the pool eat, that kind of thing. So everything is automated, right? Automate, automated check-in. You could also automate it that when the guests key their code in on the front door, it will automatically disarm the alarm. So you don't have to worry about the alarm going off and being called because the alarm is off, is off, right? So those are some of the stuff you use to automate. So automation is going to be important. The next thing is having a great team. You want to have really good house cleaners so and you want to use more than one, right? You don't want to have just one house cleaner because if that house cleaner gets sick or can't come and you have one property, then what are you going to do? So you need to have a house cleaning company or a house cleaner you could trust. You need to have a handy guy as, on your team as well for stuff like clogged tiling, changing the AC filters, you know, stuff that goes wrong. They break a chair, they break something, you know, um, stuff that can be fixed on, during a turnover. So if you have like a, a guest checkout today, somebody's checking in tomorrow, they broke a table chair, stuff like that, you want to have your under guy ready. So it's very important for you to have a team. The next thing is Airbnb can give you passive income when you have it automated and when you have a good team by your side. Now you can hire your property management company and they'll do all this stuff for you, but make sure you check your property management company and know that they will be there for you. So if there's a call, an emergency call, somebody's gonna be there to, um, to take care of that for you. The next thing is, Investing in Airbnb can make you into a millionaire if you know exactly what to do. So you could do different things with Airbnb. You could be a property manager, you could be a host, you could own your own property, right? So you could own your own properties, manage some other properties, rent some other properties. There's so much aspect that you could do with that. Um, also, you if you're automating, then you could manage the Airbnb from anywhere because everything is going to be nothing but an app on your phone. All you got to do is check in on your app or have the app alert you to certain things. So that's going to be super important. You also want to make sure you're picking the best properties, right? So if you're in the Disney World area, you want to make sure you're not more than 30 minutes away from Disney. If you could be 15 minutes away from Disney, that's even better. But if your goal is to market to the people going to Disney, Universal, and SeaWorld, then you want to be within 15 to 20 minutes of that, no more than 30 minutes. And this is with traffic, because we've got to factor in traffic. It gets very trafficy here um, every day, actually. When we first moved there, it was not happening every day, but right now, every day. And you also want to know the seasonality of the market. That's going to be super important. In our market, September and October is very slow. 
So if you bought the property in August and you put it on the market for September and you are not getting a lot, a lot of bookings, that's why. But if you don't know that, you're going to be blaming, oh my gosh, they said this was a good property. I can't believe this is happening to me. What happened? September and October is going to be two slow months. Also January, February. Thing is with January and February, though, we do get a lot of snowbirds that want to rent for a month or two to get away from the cold of wherever they're coming from. Whether it be further up north or it be from Canada or wherever they're coming from. Okay? Um, so you want to make sure you got to pick the best property. You also want to analyze your risk, right? And analyzing the risk is number eight. You want to analyze your risk. You want to um, cut down on the risk you could, you could cut down on, like what we call, we call it calculated risk. This is the reason why automation is so important. Because the more you automate your home, the less riskier your investment will be. The more you're able to control stuff, you're able to control the thermostat or lock the thermostat so they can't bring it over a certain temperature, right? Make sure your sliding doors are automated so if they open it and keeping it open for more than uh, five minutes, your AC system will shut off and it will not come back on until they close it. Those are, that's part of automation, right? And you make sure you tell them that during your book, during your, um, during your, on your either junior welcome letter or when they check into the property make sure it's a part of your book right the book that you give them with all the rules regulations that kind of thing what we normally tell them is this our air conditioning system is energy efficient if any exterior doors are open for more than five minutes the air conditioning system will shut itself off and it will not come back on until all the exterior doors are closed this also includes the door leading to the game room because a lot of time people will convert the garage into a game room and you'll have fans in there. Some people have an AC, but if the AC, that's what we call a split AC in the garage. If the split AC is not on and they keep that door open and just have the fans going, it's gonna kill your air conditioning bill because all that hot air is coming out of that garage, right? Or they may have the garage door open, the actual garage door open, so you wanna make sure that those garage doors cannot be opened by guests. Talking about the literal garage, not the garage door that leads from the house to the garage, but the literal garage door itself. Make sure they can't open it because they will open it and have it just open. They'll also open it and have a barbecue outside, which of course most HOA will not allow that. You can't be barbecuing in the front of the home. Are you serious? They'll do it. So these are some of the stuff that you could do what we call calculated risk. Some of the risks you can't calculate is someone coming and trashing your property. You know, they have beautiful reviews. You have all this, you know, you thought they were going to be great guests. They came in and they trashed the property. The good news is most platforms, Airbnb, Booking.com, Verbio, most platforms do have insurance for their hosts. So if a guest trash your property, you're able to send the after, you know, take the pictures, sign it in to create a claim. What I tell my clients too is you want to take the pictures before they moved in, before they check in. I keep saying moving in, real estate in my head. Um, check in and, and so that when they check out, they can't say, no, that was like that before. No. Have your cleaners send you a whole set of pictures every time they clean so you have evidence, right? Super important. Location. Location is important, as I've mentioned before. Um, in the Disney World area, you don't want to be too far from the parks. But there's another opportunity in Central Florida for people who are looking to relocate. So someone might be looking to rent a home for a month or two or three because they're either um, coming into the area for the first time and not sure where they want to live and they want to give themselves time to look around. Maybe they're building a home and the home isn't finished building yet. Maybe they're coming down for work for a few months because a lot of these companies hire these transitional people, including traveling nurses as well. So those are some of the, so those are some of the opportunities that you can also look into. And you could rent, and that would be great for September, October, January, February, when we have our slower months and we want to fill those days as well. Another thing is review. Number 10 is reviews. Reviews are super duper important. Um, why is that a part of the inter interested facts that you may not know? What you may not know is how reviews affect your booking. So even though you want to argue with the guests and the guest is in the wrong and you know the guest is in the wrong, there are many times when we know the guests are in the wrong. You don't want to rub them too hard. You don't want to argue with them because that's going to affect your review status. Now, am I saying you should lower your expectations because of review? No. But what I am saying is you want to woe them when they first check in. So how do you woe them when, you, when they first check in? Because they're coming to get the Disney experience, right? And if you're telling them, hey, you don't have to de work, rent a Disney hotel room, you can rent my pool home over here, then they're gonna expect the same expectations, even though you have nothing to do with Disney World, but you have to realize that in the guest mind, they're, they, they wanna experience the whole Disney package. So you wanna woe them when they check in. And how do you do this? By what you leave out for them. 
you know, you, do, you, do you leave out water, coffee, um, snacks, a bottle of wine? If you know they're having a birthday, do you leave a birthday cake? Do you leave a bouquet of flowers? What are you doing? You have to do things to woo them, to give them this whole experience. So why do you want to do that? You want to do that so if there's any issues in between in their state, any issues at all, the remote isn't working, a light bulb is blown, the toilet got clogged, the pool isn't out enough, all the stuff that they're going to complain about, in wooing them, they might take it a little bit better because they might approach you a little bit different. It may not be an aggression when they approach you of, I pay for pool eater, the pool isn't hot enough, or whatever they approach you with. It's gonna be, oh hey, I'm so sorry. I, I really love the home. I love exact I love what you, you you left such a good package for us. We really love it. Just want to let you know the pool is not as hot as we thought it would be. And then you could deal with that. Would that be it's not the correct temperature, or maybe they expect it to be as hot as the spa, which will never happen, but these are stuff you'd explain to them. But they'll approach you differently as opposed to just I've gone to so many Airbnb properties and they just leave the bare essentials for the guests. It's like, okay, guess here it is. I don't know what they're charging, obviously, but it, some of the properties I've been in, just showing, you know, just in my daily real estate life, I'm like, I would not stay here. Like, there's no wow factor. There's no nothing. Nothing is left out for the guests but the bare essentials, and I don't, we don't work like that. So these are some of the things that you may not know about Airbnb if you're into, if you're looking to buy an Airbnb property. It, we offer complimentary consultations. We could do it by phone or by a Zoom call. Number 47791-4713. You could call that number or leave a text there. Um, and just let us talk with you, okay? So if you're looking to do an Airbnb investment property in the Central Florida, Orlando area, we invite you to give us a call for a complimentary consultation so we could walk you through what are some of the, do, some of the do's and some of the don'ts in the area. Thank you so much. My name is Sandy Sills. I'm a licensed realtor here, specializing in Airbnb investment properties. Thank you so much for watching.